You. Yeah, you. If you ever needed help with anything regarding offense in Man 20, then you can stop searching right now because this is a perfect video you could have possibly land up, landed on. Now, before I get into anything, subscribe. Please. Now, after that, we're going to get into something. We're going to start by setting our audibles once again. This is one of the most popular offenses in the game because it has many, many good plays. Some of these plays, it's personal preference which ones you like. So these audibles can be different for you if you find that some setups are better. Or some plays are better in your opinion. Set those as your audibles, obviously. Now, my preferred ones are deep corner, halfback sweep, mesh post and corner strike. And let's talk about uh, personnel in ultimate team. To run this offense in more... Effectively, you only need one slot apprentice wide receiver. So in theory, you could invest into a running back with chemistries on him. Now, I personally don't like that. I like to have two wide receivers. That's just me. You know, you can be different. That's just me. I like it that way bet better. But yeah, really personal preference. Now we're going to get into how to attack different zone coverages. Or coverages in general and we'll start by man coverage man coverage really is only prevalent because really really good blitzes there are some good man blitzes out there and the general general rule of thumb for those is I'm gonna find man blitz that I like slide to the side of the tight end which is L1 R, R to the right, C to the right. I'm not going to explain these adjustment going for, uh, adjustments going forward. This is not an easy offense and I expect you to know all of, uh, how to make adjustments. And we're going to ID the mic on this guy right here. And then we can put main beating routes on, out on the field. I would usually put the slot apprentice wide receiver on in the element spot if I only have one. Put him on this corner route. And then just boom, absolutely burn him. Now... There are some plays or some blitzes that are better than others and that don't allow you to uh, throw the corner out that easily. In that case, if a blitz, for example, always screams in from the right side, even if there are only seven people rushing and you have seven people blocking, then you need to do a motion block. This, this is called motion block because your motion receiver who then blocks for you. You want a motion block to a set just like that. So that he picks up the furthest, furthest out, outside rusher, and then you can either you can roll out that way, you can scramble, you can hit the corner route, or you can hit the post route. If you see that that man gets beat, that's all for man coverage. Pretty much, you have to know how to block it. Blitz and not every block can blitz can be blocked the same way. There's some people out there that have crazy blitzes that I've never seen before, and most people online haven't seen before. You just have to try, try it. Usually, a good recipe against uh, blitzes is to send out five routes and usually people modify their zones because they're afraid of getting beat deep if they always run main coverage you just run man beating routes like the corner route and then they're gonna have trouble so they usually put zones behind it and if they are rushing seven people they only have four people in coverage and if you're sending out five people and you spread them uh, you force the user to make a tough decision on who, on who to guard then that's interesting, of course. Right there, there were only seven, uh, six people blitzing, so there were five in coverage. All of them were man coverage. The wheel wasn't open. But for example, um, uh, ve one very popular adjustment to do is to send, the, put this guy in a soft squad, use the reward, and have a cover six look backside. Now they can't. They physically can't cover everything it's just about making the read quick enough so that you have to read the user is he covering a drag okay i'm showing the running back there that's how you have to attack some blitzers send out five routes and they're gonna have a really really tough time blitzing not to say that you you're watching this video and you're gonna instantly beat everyone blitzing i personally struggle with blitzes a lot and that's why i've paid a lot of attention on how to attack it but it's still really difficult with users out there they c and lurker safeties. It's really tough. You just have to get used to making quick reads. That's it. <clears throat> now let's talk about cover three. Cover three. Yeah, let me not have this. I'm gonna go into a big nickel. I'm gonna stay in big nickel actually because it's really balanced. And yeah, it's 
also a very popular defense online. How do you attack cover 3? There are multiple ways to attack it, we're gonna start with sticks. Uh, with stick. This corner out by door set, if you motion snap it right here, you see how it gets to the sideline right there? That gets open. In general, against cover 3, you wanna attack the sidelines. Also another way is to play deep corner, max protect, put element on the corner out, slot apprentice, remember guys. And then just try to throw the corner out. You see how that also gets open against a cover 3. Really, really powerful stuff. In general, cover 3s are very weak to the sideline. And they can also get beaten for one play touchdowns really easily. One one play touchdown to beat cover three, for example, is stick. Put Edelman, in this case, on a fade. Motion snap or set to the outside. Doesn't get bumped. That's perfect. And right there, you see how he gets open. That's one way of beating cover three. There are multiple ways to beat cover three out of this formation, which is really nice. I like it a lot. One, one other way is deep corner, max protect. Put Sinu on a comeback route and Edelman, for example, on a drag. And this post is going to get open. But the reason why I'm flying through this is because I'm going to get into all of this with greater detail going forward. Now these are, these, these are just some uh, these are just simply some general concepts to beat certain coverages. Cover two. Cover twos are very weak along the sidelines. For example, one great way of beating cover two is to run this corner strike play. Streak Edelman in route on Sanu and block the running back. Then you can motion across, double team him. This is really sophisticated. I'm, I'm going to explain this in more detail, no worries. And then you just throw this corner out and it gets really open. So in general, how, how to attack cover, cover three is you want to attack it with deep corner outs, just like that one, attack the sidelines, flood the sidelines. And you can also, for example run post routes. Post routes can also work. And I get sacked there. But you saw the post route on circle. Got open. Now, cover 4 acts very similarly to a cover 3, just so you know. So, let's talk about all the plays from top to bottom, and we're going to start with wide receiver post. There is one very, very powerful setup from wide receiver post that pro players run all the time. That setup is to Slant R1, put the tight end on a delay fade, which is just a delay route that you can then send out. So it first blocks, then you motion snap it across. And now you feel like you want to release it. Yeah, that didn't quite work because he fell down. We're going to try that again. But slant, delay fade, maybe double team that guy so you don't have a... So we don't have D Ford one among the tight end. Then we release him, we press X, and then you see that he goes out on a route, which I can then throw. That's only the second part of the play. The better part is actually that you can, uh, if you're patient enough, once again, motion snap. If you're patient enough, you can throw this crossing route. And a lot of people like to get really adjusted with their defenses. So... What that means, they adjust very heavily on the backside. And if you want to, you can really easily attack a user and force him to choose between the slant and the crosser. He can only cover one with his user. If you realize early enough that he's going to go to the crossing round, you can throw the slant right in front of those hook curls. Unless they're shaded down, unless they are right on top of the slant. You're going to see right now that I'm... I can throw this ball really easily right there, boom. And that's about 6-7 yards. Really good. Next time, maybe the user is going to bite down on slant, and then you throw the crossing rod. You're really only re reading the user. You can throw both passes really easily. Just got to make the right read and don't throw it at the user. That's the main point of this play now. The second good point is this is a great cover 3 and cover 2 beater. We're going to start by beating cover 3. Cover 3 is in, generally, is in general way easier to beat. You only put R1 on this corner route, and then you will see how this does a great job of getting behind cover 3. Just like that. Boom. And you see, even though Tom Brady has a noodle arm in this game, 
you can see that he re he gets open or he can make that throw. Now let's talk about cover two. Cover two is a bit tougher with Tom Brady because you ne you need somebody to really fire the ball in there. But I'm gonna try it. Same setup. And what you want to do actually is you want to try to roll out a bit that way, and then pass lead it directly at the up the field. And you see that throw was incredibly incredibly slow. That was a really soft throw. And you saw that he almost got it. If you have 99 throw power there, that's a really easy completion. So this is great at beating cover three and cover two. And this also has a really good setup with the slant and the delay fade. Remember to only release the delay fade if you know that you're going to have time. If it's a one-on-one -on -one and you release the, the delay fade, you're going to get stacked pretty much instantly. Just be aware of that. But in general, delay fades... Whenever you feel like you need to block a tight end, put him on a delay fade because he basically does the same thing and still blocks for you. And if you see that there is a lot of room and nobody's covering the tight end, then obviously re release him and he's going to get many, many yards for you. <clears throat> now let's move on to the next play. Actually, we're going to go from top to bottom. Yeah, my computer is messing up, but that's okay. Now that we've just talked about uh, where you see your post? Let's talk about deep attack. Now you might say it looks very similar. Also got a post route. Yeah, but it's sort of a different one. And I'm gonna start by cover three sky. Now, this post route also has its advantages. You can, for example, uh, you can attack cover three with this. Uh, you can run this setup where you put your tight end on the delay fade. Obviously, you can double team him, motion snap or a uh, set or just or just leave him. Uh, as he is and then you can hit that throw with a low pass is probably a bit risky so I just made a mistake there online that might have been picked but you can fit in that that pass right there and I'm going to show it to you again that you can fit that pass in and that is a really really good completion now it used to be better in previous years but you still can throw that pass now besides that, there is one more setup that I would like to share with you guys. Once again, Edelman on this corner route. These corner routes, they're really lethal, so use them as often as you can. Streak door set, Watson on a drag, and now you're, you're making a tougher read. It depends on what the user covers. If he first goes to the corner route, then you read from drag to post. If he stays on the post drag read, then you obviously try to read the corner. This is now a little bit tougher, but we're going to see if we can manage it. Okay, let's just say that he tried to guard the corner out the user there. We're going to throw the post. If you want to throw the corner out, however, you need to get outside of the pocket. And that's what's really tough about this play with Tom Brady. He's not going to get out of the, out of the pocket very well. We, we get instant shattered by two people. Yeah. So that was not ideal. Trust me, if you can roll out there. It's gonna be. It's gonna do a better job. Um, I'll try to roll out that way. Can I? I can actually. So you see, if you can roll out, that gets really, really, really wide open. Just letting you know that gets wide open. There are not many more things that you can do with this. There are actually, I guess, but they're not. I'll explain that later. This is all for, uh, what's, this, what's it called? Deep attack for now. Halfback sweep, I'm not going to go up over halfback sweep, but halfback sweep is a really, really good run play. It's absolutely demolishes. Big dime one for six. Trust me, it works. Run it, use it. It does a great job. Now let's talk about stick. I already showed you guys that this does a good job at defeating cover three. Cover three cloud flats is the thing that I'm going to be running on defense. And I personally like to put Edelman on a post, Sanu on a streak, Watson on a drag, so that in case that the user covers door set or it for some reason gets covered, we still have another read. So you see how I can throw that right there. Love that animation. That pretty much never happens. Okay, okay guys, trust me, that never happens. You're going to be fine. But pretend that this corner route is not there. You can then still throw this post route. And if the post route is not there, check down to the running to the running back. A running back. Mm, to the tight end. My bad guys, but we're gonna leave it with no cuts. 
Besides that, there's also this cover 3 video that I mentioned previously. Just make sure to get enough time and have the pass lead all the way to the right. Tom Brady didn't lead him far enough because he's got really a weak arm just like me in real life. But he's not going to make that throw very often. Just because it's a tough throw to make and he's not that strong. But right there you saw, it gets open. If you have 99 throw power, Michael Vick there. Or even better, maybe Lamar Jackson. Or even better, the best quarterback in the league right now, Patrick Mahomes. That's of course an easy pitch and catch. Now, let's go further down the line. Stick is pretty much only good for the corner out that you can th quick throw and discover three meter because many people don't expect it. It's only one adjustment. You put him on a, on a fade, that's what it's called. Put him on a fade, motion him out, and your opponent is really not going to be ex expecting it. It's a really quick hitter. Mesh post. Let's talk about mesh post, guys. Shall we? Let's talk about mesh post. Mesh post is a beautiful play. Absolutely beautiful. You can all you can run it stock. It's a great play stock. You can hit that post. If I got if I had gotten time there, that post would have been open. I'm gonna show it to you guys again. I'm gonna snap the ball. Try to get time. And I got the time this time. Jesus Tom, what are you doing? What are we doing, Tommy boy? I'm gonna try it one more time to show you that you can hit that post. Tight window, better throw power, it gets in there really easily. Of course, I wasn't the correct read there. In that instance, I should have hit the drag, just like that. Drag is always open, pretty much always. Unless you're po oh, your opponent's user, my, my fault there. Unless your opponent's user really jumps down on the drag, which in, in which case you would always hit the post. The drag is pretty much always open. Now you can also, if you want, throw that flat route. And if everything else fails, you can try to find your running back late, just like that. Ooh, a bit too early. But that running back can also be open. Just so you know, I, I usually don't throw it at, with that timing, but it can work. Now let's get into some setups. The most popular setup that I like to do is this one right here? I block the tight end. I put these. Uh, I put the solo wide receiver on an outer. I hitch Edelman, and then I motion snap door set. Now, why is that so powerful? Because I can throw this route to the running back, and it's a guaranteed five yards. Pretty much guaranteed. There are some ways that it can be covered, but only the best people know that. And then, of course, you still have other reads. In case that the wheel route gets covered, you can look from hitch. To post, I would if you are, if I were you and I wanted to, and if you wanted to run that play the most effective, most effective way, I would put a uh, maxed out Tory Holt in the slot, put slot apprentice on him or wide receiver apprentice, so that he gets every route in the route tree, and put playmaker on him, so that if you hitch him and if you now decide to playmaker him, he reacts instantly. Just FYI, that can make it a little bit more effective. Not a lot. But a little bit, if you feel like this play is something that you want to explore. Now, there are of course other plays, but all of them revolve around other setups. But all of them revolve around this concept right here: that the wheel route gets open and that the post route gets open. This is also something that's pardon me because I have to take it down to the goal line right here. This is also something that is very powerful in the red zone. I'm gonna have a whole part of the video dedicated to the red zone. But I'm gonna show you this right now. This does a great job against in the red zone. Just like that. I'm gonna set it up. And so you see how he gets open there? That's that's beautiful. Your user has to cover that. Now, let's talk about let's talk about what happens if your user covers it. Let's just say that Denzel not Denzel, Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward is the opponent's user. Mo a lot of people in the red zone use the safeties. This, the free safety that is in charge of covering the middle of the field is the most likely person uh, for your opponent to use it. Now, if your opponent decides to hit the wheel route, which we've decided can is going to get open, you are going to, going to hit the post. He can, he can only guard one. They're really far apart. Okay, he, can, he can only hit one, uh, guard one. If he guards the wheel, you throw the post. If he guards the post, then he throw the wheel. I've thrown this wheel 
this wheel many times. And trust me when I say that it's money. It's money. You see that? I knew that was going to happen. This gets open almost all the time. Let's move the ball back a bit to the 35. I'm kind of superstitious. Everything I try, I try from the 35. <sighs> but yeah, there are all obviously some variations to the setup where you put a SIG out there and see if you can get your opponent's user to chase the SIG to make the post route even more open. But that's just uh, a little wrinkle you can throw in there. That's all for mesh post for now. Once again, we're going to go into a bit more complicated setups later in the video. Where I'm going to show you the route swap glitch, also really powerful. If you needed something to make you stick around, that should be it. Verticals. Let's get into verticals. Verticals used to be really powerful. Because last year you were able to motion snap him to the outside and throw him right here. Now they patched that because they thought that this was too powerful. Which I guess it was, but competent folks could shut it down. Still, this no longer works. So verticals got... <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so verticals got nerfed a lot. There's pretty much only setup, only one setup that I use. It's this one right here. Which you can basically make out of any play. Put element on a post, door set on a drag, the other one on restreak him because the streak is bad, just as it is, and then just make the read. That's pretty much the only good setup there is left for verticals. It's sad, I know, but you just have to deal with it. Yeah, it's. I find it sad because why make passing even tougher? But that's what they decided to do. Anyways, there is one way where you can throw verticals and it's really powerful inside your opponent's 20 yard line let me tell you this is a really really good play you only need to look at the uh, wheel route but one thing that I like to do is I, I streak Edelman put Sanu on a drag and if I motion snap him you will see that I can throw this wheel route and get about 10 yards excuse me <clears throat> so you see that this still has some value it obviously is obviously can be completed and that's part of the field uh, but with it only being valuable in this specific area I'm not a huge fan of it but in the red zone believe me this is powerful most of the time you can also do a setup like this then motion snap him and if your opponent ch chases uh, the if your opponent chases the wheel route my bad you can then throw the post strut if you find a window to throw it in the back of the end zone. Now, let's move the ball back again, shall we? Once again, make sure we're on the 35. Perfect. Okay. Go back to the play call menu and call the next play. Is it recording? Okay, perfect. Deep corner. Finally, I get to talk about Deep Corner. This is the, in my opinion, most powerful play in the game. Hands down, not even close. Best play in the game. What it used to be, I guess it's not anymore, but it's still really, really tough. My first setup would be this one right here. Just max protect, put the tight end on it, lay fade, Edelman on the corner route, and streak door set. Motion door set out, and this works against pretty much any coverage. This corner out gets open almost all the time. And if it doesn't, then there's the in route. Yep, your user has to choose one. Either guard the, chase the corner route or give up the and, and by that giving up the in route. Or give up the corner route and guard the in route. Now there are a couple of ways uh, that this can be defended. In the, if both of the routes are covered can still hit that tight end in effect. It's really good, guys. It's really, really, really mighty. Okay? It's really good. Now, we already talked about the cover 3 beater. There is another one. You can put element on a corner out, streak on a fade, and now, if you look at it, this will also get open. Now, you see that Tom Brady has a t bit of a tougher time getting it there 
because it's not that wide open. But it still gets behind the coverage. If I streak him, maybe that's better. Try with the streak now. Perfect. But trust me, you can you can throw that even with 99 speed corners. I've thrown that ball a couple of times now. It's not something that I look for very often, but if I see it, I'll obviously take the touchdown. Right, guys, right, obviously. Now, let's talk about how to make it easier to roll out on these cor on those corner routes. I would put Watson on a drag and motion my running back across. I would then double team this guy, the D tackle, and I did the mic on him. Now what happens is he gets cut block and cut blocked and by that I can roll out. And against the cover three it's gonna it's pretty tough to catch that. Just because uh the corner out bites down on it, leaving the streak wide open. That's why it works as a cover three reader. But as a result of that, it obviously covers the corner route pretty well. Now I'm going to switch to a cover two. Against the cover two, you can also run. This is not my preferred play against the cover two, but it also works. Once again, get the cut block. Beautiful. And now you see how I can easily, easily, easily throw that. Easy. Now... Against the cover two, it's a bit tougher because the cloud flat zones they drop or they run to the line of scrimmage a bit later, making it, it a bit of a late longer wait for you and therefore the user has or the pass versus has more of a chance to cut to get to you. But obviously this can work. Now one thing that I really like to do is throw the drag to my tight end because this Weirdly enough, this attracts a lot of attention. A lot of the times when I throw the, uh, the tight end drag for the first time, they then overcommit to stopping that. I don't know why I've had that happen to me a couple of times now, where people just go mad and dedicate so m many resources to the drag, and then and that then opens up many other things on that play, obviously. But it's just funny to me. wanted to mention that. Now... That's pretty much all for that for that play. Many, play. many, many, many of these plays don't have very complex setups, but they're really good. Just look at that. In route gets wide open. That's beautiful. I've thrown that in route how many times now? I can't. Even, I can't even keep count. I've thrown it so many times, and it still works. It's a tough play to stop. It's not unstoppable. Nothing in this game is unstoppable. But this is really difficult to stop. <clears throat> Now, going back. Next play, corner strike. And this is also, yeah, I think this is going to, to be the last play. Corner strike, really good. Really good, just like I said. This is a good play against cover two. Once again, we're going to do this setup right here. Streak Edelman in route on Sunu. And then you want to double team him to get that same cut block. And I did the mic on the outside rusher. So that right there happens. And now you see how we get all the time in the world. And this corner route is just wide open. It's wide open. That has to be user covered against the cover two. And if it happens to be user covered, you can obviously throw the in route. Or what I have had a lot of success with is just throwing. Uh, is just throwing the flat route and playmaker it up the field oops yeah he didn't see it there but a lot of the times the user chases the corner out and then drops back to the in route and if i then playmaker up the flat route it gets wide open really really fun to do i love doing that because then they are really confused because they have to guard the corner of the in route and then also worry about the flat getting playmaker up that's a lot to cover but yeah, corner strike, not really good. Besides that, mm, I don't want to say that because there's one thing that I found out recently with these uh, corn, these C corner routes. If you, <laughs> let's see if I can explain this um, or how I can explain this. Basically, this corner route by Sunu will now get wide open.
God damn it, Nick Bosa. Let's try that again. Double team him. And you see how that gets open. So there are other ways to make that play work. They're just not quite as good as the one that I just showed you. Now, let's get into something that is really interesting. If you want to, you can submit a running back in that spot right there on the outside bunch receiver. Right there, sub him in. It's also important that the formation is not flipped. Just keep that in mind. Sub in a running back right there. And now, if you come out, let's start with Mish Post. Oops, I made a mistake. I'm going to move the ball over and then I'm going to redo that because I made a mistake. You want to call it the play flipped. So this, as a result, only works if you're on the right hash mark. If you're on the right hash mark, you can do that. Call whichever play you want to run. Let's say mesh, mesh post. Call mesh post. Flipped. Very important. Call that play flipped. Uh, cover three sky. And now let's work some magic. I'm going to audible to whichever play I want to. Deep corner. In the formation. Very important. Now you see these two people swap places. Now if I reset the play once, it looks regularly. If I reset the play twice... Now things get fucked up. You see your circle and the R1 go to the outside. This is a drag route. If I put circle on another drag route, it still goes to the outside. R1 the same. So you see that this is really glitchy. And now if I want to make a setup with this, I can do something like this where I only block the halfback. And you see how number 54 chases the drag route to the outside. Zones are not used to seeing that, and people online definitely aren't used to seeing that. So just again, audible to any play. Doesn't matter because we're not going to use that play anyways. Then reset the play twice. Then you get this fucked up shit. Now one thing that is very nice about this is you can get slant routes on circle, for example, to the outside. And if I now streak Sinu, I have a really, really, really good cover 3 beater. Just like that, get the animation. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, talking about that, this also works as a great, 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 great corner route. Obviously, it looks sort of like a sharp corner route. It also works like one. For that, please turn your, uh, please, uh, turn your attention to the R1 receiver. Boom. Just like that. Just like that. Excuse me. Audible once again. And then reset the play twice. That's how you can get that. Now, with that, you can make many, many great route combos. But this is really for everyone to explore by himself. Because I have not spent a lot of time doing this now. I just found this cover 3 beater to work very very well that's all i'm gonna say this is a really really tough glitch if you're running on the if you're running upon this online you're getting smacked because there are so many new route combos that you just don't know how to defend yet tom makes a throw tom brady he's not washed he's still a young gun he's still out there balling I guess that's how you say it. Balling. But yeah. Obviously in a retirement home. <clears throat> but yeah, this is just really good. This also works for any other play in the formation. Any. Any play you want to run, this works. The interesting thing now is... That's just something that I've experimented with a bit. And I'm going to end the video really shortly because th this is the last thing that I want to show you guys. Actually, second to last thing. If I now want to motion Edelman inside, he's on his drag again. And if I now motion him over, you will see that he overlaps with the running back. Isn't that glitchy? I, I tell you, this is absolutely glitchy. 
No, I haven't figured out any rod combos with that yet because that's just crazy and I've not experimented with that. But think about that. How many crazy things you can do with that? And really, the sky is, lim is the limit for that because that's, that's wild. Anyways, I really appreciate your time. I hope you learned something from this video. Please pass the volume man 20. You see that there are so many opportunities to do so. All of these things are really powerful. Just know... That you have to try. Sometimes these things are not going to work for you. But stick with it. Stick with it. These are really powerful plays. Maybe not that one. Also that's something. That, that's actually something I want to talk to you guys about. Um, let's just call deep corner. And. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Now I'm not going to re reset the play. Because I actually want deep corner. If you put Edelman on Ikura right here and wheel the running back behind it, if you now want to take some time to wait, look how open the running back gets. That's just a little nugget for you guys to use online. Only works against cover two. Hey! I'm gonna be streaming tomorrow. What time is it where I'm gonna be streaming? I'm gonna be streaming 7 p.m. my time. That's 1 p.m. your time. Hope you're hope going to be there. There are going to be quite a lot of people from Austria and from Germany in there just because I've had the Twitch before. I'm German. Don't be shy. Say hi. That rhymes, so it must be true. See you in the next one. Peace. And also, very important thing. I wrote all of this stuff down. Link is in the description. With even some extra setups. To link it, uh, to the Word doc. No. To the Google Docs document is in the description. Go check that out. Hope to see you in the next video. Please subscribe. Bye.